do you think normal blood pressure is? This is a really interesting one. I used to run higher blood pressure than that. And then now I run much lower blood pressure than that. I used to run high heart rates and I run much lower. And then when you ask, like if you go to Germany, the they think that high blood pressure is 140 and above. And in other countries, it's even lower than that. So it's weird. We've never done long-term experiments to determine the exact level where blood pressure should be, what normal should be. Around this level is sort of seems to be the right level. But this is basically with people eating carbohydrates at this level. When I, because you've seen mine, I, I showed it. Um, I'm not going to, I'd have to find my phone anywhere to show it. But, you know, my levels are much lower. And it's a consequence of, and you know how to read blood pressure as well. You have to be completely calm and you have to be seated and your hands parallel to your heart. You know, they can't be, you know, like drooping down. So they have to be parallel. So you have to sort of lie them down parallel to the sort of uh, your body and all your body has to be relaxed and you have to not talk, do anything, just be calm and all that and just be in a Zen type calm state. And then you can actually get the proper reading. So you have to take five minutes of just calmness and then take, take the reading. That's when you get a proper reading. Um, otherwise you get a lot of variation. So I had to do that to be able to get the ultimate sort of basal level. That's how you can only measure it. A lot of doctors still don't do it properly. They have no idea what they're doing. And even though the recommendations in the textbooks tell them that's how they should do it, they don't do it. They even talk to you. Why are you talking to me? I said to my doctor once, you know, you know what the textbook says? You shouldn't basically be talking. I should be calm completely to get a basal reading. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. And he still was talking to me. <laughs> you know, what do you say? I've only got five minutes to deal with you or seven minutes. Oh, yeah, whatever. You know, you just want to see whether I've got high blood pressure so you can give me a med. I mean, really? So my approach is that around that sort of level, you don't want to be below 100, then you really, that's probably an issue. It's probably too low. And I think even up to 130 and all that is fine. Um, some G German physicians say up to 140 is not a problem in older age. Um, they say they've got in a one experimentation and case studies that show a number of their clients who have lived into their 90s or even higher and around about the 130 range. And they say no higher than 140 for the general public. So it's very, very unclear where the normal range should be. So, and remember all these ranges were developed with people with higher, running higher insulins than we're running. No wonder our levels get hot, lower. Simply put, they get lower. Um, now, taurine has an effect on blood pressure because it is a natural ch calcium channel blocker. What it does is it regulates blood pressure, intra and extracellular fluids. That means inside the cell and outside the cell. So it usually ends up going, when you have enough taurine, it ends up going lower than that. And taurine supposedly is supposed to get you into homeostasis. That means if blood pressure is too high, it brings it down. Blood pressure too low, it brings it up. But usually it's around the, the sort of levels that you end up getting when you, what I've noticed when I get enough taurine in, it's usually around about the 117, 18 sort of levels. And, you know, in the higher 70s, is where it tends to be at a higher dose of taurine. And I think there it's actually forcing it into that level. So probably the 120 to 80 is probably not too far away from the actual figure. But at the end of the day, I don't know. 
none of us really know. This was basically done from a lot of observational studies and determined it wasn't de determined through clinical, long-term clinical studies. They didn't lock anyone else in a, in a ward and, and test them and check them and observe them over many years to determine um, what is the natural proper physiological range. It was an arbitrary committee decision, Adrian. So that's all I can say about that. But all I can say is that when I take taurine, I tend to be, if I'm really relaxed myself completely, I'll be below that number. If I'm a bit more being hectic around the day, I will run blood pressure around that range or sometimes a bit higher, like a 122 or something like that. So, and eventually, if I calm myself down for many for a number of hours, it will dip below that. So, is it close to that? Maybe, you know, don't know. I don't think anybody really knows. They can give you a definitive. And maybe there's a difference between people for a whole lot of different reasons. And I know that there are some centenarians that run slightly high into the 130s and all that and live to over 100 years. So am I too low? You know, this is what I'm saying. It's committees aren't the best experts. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you can't really rely on the RDIs. It's it's like thiamine. You know, if you're oxidizing um, either fat or protein because you've got you've run out of fat stores. You only need one pathway, one enzymatic pathway, which requires half the the thiamine, vitamin B1. But if you're taking carbohydrates, you need both, so far more. And all these things have an effect on blood pressure, water retention, osm osmotic pressure, um, the even if your taurine is regulating the ions. If you're deficient in some ions, is that regulation going to be perfect? None of us know. These sort of these sort of re, this sort of research has never been done to determine really accurately. The only thing I do know is that the recycling at the kidney level in those little nephrons, those little tubule things in the, in the where the fluids go through and get filtered in those little things, that's where there is, it's packed with taurine um, transporters. They're called T A U T, taut transporters. That's where taurine goes and resides to, for those transporters, those to work. They require taurine and they basically determine the type of stuff that gets excreted and the type of stuff that gets, um, uh, you know, recycled and back into the system, into circulation. So, that's another area where we haven't sufficient research, unfortunately. You know, of course we can't do human experiments. So we do it with rats. It's not the same because some of that the physiology is not exactly the same, the way that works. So we don't know is the biggest problem in this arena. I wish I could give you a definitive answer. I can't. I can tell you what the ranges are and what other people talk about, but yeah, I think it's around that, probably around that level, but whether slightly above or slightly below, I think the normal range, to be honest, I think it's much wider. It's not, and there are a whole lot of genetics and other factors and the blood vessel morphology. That means how the thickness, the wide, how wide. Some people have, like I know, in a, there are a number of people that tend to ha, um, have much small. This is due to genetics, much narrower blood vessels. So even in the heart, they can't even put stents in if they have um, some some blockage. They can't even put a stent in. You know they have to approach things very differently. You know using certain types of drugs that break out, break down those clots and stuff like that. And, and try and actually open up those arteries, 
with a balloon type thing and other things because they can't even put a stent in there. They're so narrow. So there are a whole lot of issues and that affects the blood pressure and the way the blood dynamics in the in the in the arterial system. So it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna vary. I think it's close to this level, but I think the range of the normal is a bit wider on both ends of that number. That's my personal opinion. Because when you're seeing people run slightly higher and slightly lower and live very long years without any health problems, I don't think, you know, I think very low blood pressure and very high blood pressure are going to be a problem. But I think the the, the normal range is much wider than this, is the, my take-home message. What shall I say? If you want great blood pressure, cut smoking. Definitely, that's one of the things. Cut coffee. Yes, um, cut coffee does. I have noticed when I do cut coffee, my blood pressure drops much lower. Um, so it actually goes way lower than 120 over 80. And if I have too much coffee, it'll go slightly creep up to 122, 123. So that is true about coffee. It's a definite. But I don't think it's a, for me personally, I don't consider it a deal breaker. But for other people that are shitty foods and a lot of other things, it could be a problem where they're up to 140, 150 or, or above. So there it can be a problem for those people. Then you're putting far more, far too strain, so far too much pressure within the blood vessels and that can cause issues. We know it does. So there is good research on that. Um, so the shear, the shearing force does have a tendency of collapsing more of the glycocalyx. You know, those little hair things in your blood vessels, they provide a negative charge on the little, the little sugary molecules that are on top of the tips of the glycocalyx. They actually provide the negative charge. That negative charge is what repels all the little things that float through your LDL, your all these things that float through your bloodstream, and that sort of stuff. And definitely we don't want them collapsing under sheer pressure, too much pressure. That's a problem. Sugar does also collapse them for about six hours. That's another side issue. And that's the glycating effect that you can actually resolve by putting in heaps of taurine if you do a cheat. Bad boy, but if you do. And then the lowering that glycating effect <laughs> immediately will actually allow for the restoration of those glycocalyx in less time than, than the six-hour sort of period. So I can actually probably cut cut up by half based on animal experiments. <laughs> so let's leave it leave it at that. <laughs>